Hi, welcome to the session on self-editing. My name is Chantal Bruckert, and I work for the Student Services Department at the Medicine Hat College. I have a master's in TESOL, so as such, I generally help international students as I am the international educational assistant, but as of recently, my job description has expanded to include domestic students as well. So, self-editing. You finished your paper. Now what? So we're going to look at some foundational keys to writing any paper before we get started. So the first one is to be clear. The second one is to be organized. And the third is to be concise. So let's look at be clear. So this is to be free from doubt or conf confusion. So you want to be clear in how you've written your paper so that your instruct instructor will be free from doubt or confusion. And you will be free from doubt or confusion too. <clears throat> Being organized is critical. So be sure you've understood the instructions and have planned your thoughts. A critical piece of their planning is to create an outline. And this will help your paper to be organized and you will know exactly what you're going to be saying in each paragraph you've included in your paper. The final key is to be concise. So this is using few words. You do not want to include extra or unnecessary information. <coughs> Before you submit your paper, self-edit. You want to be sure that you are submitting your best possible work. So before you self-edit, make sure you take a break, maybe an hour or a day from your paper. First, we will look at the big picture. I'm going to have a list here of items that are included in this big picture that you want to take a look at. So first, you want to reread the instructions. Second, you want to look at your thesis and each paragraph of your paper. So the introduction, your body paragraphs, and your conclusion. <clears throat> so let's look at rereading the instructions. So what were the questions you were supposed to answer? Have you answered all of them? What were the instructions? Did you miss anything? Take a look at the length, the pages, or the word count. And finally, which citation style were you to use? APA, MLA, or Chicago, or one of the other ones? Your thesis. Did you answer the question? So here is a simple um, example. It does not work in every situation, but if you are supposed to only answer one specific question, for example, what is your favorite season? You would take that question and you would turn it into a sentence to make your thesis. My favorite season is summer. <clears throat> So it does not always work this way, but this can be a helpful tip depending on your assignment. Is your thesis clear? Do you understand your thesis? <clears throat> Let me look at the introduction. Does your introduction introduce your topic or provide background? What is your hook? Is your, in, is your introduction interesting? You want to kind of intrigue your instructor, like pique their curiosity, and kind of make them interested in reading what you have to say. They have a ton of papers to mark for every assignment that they give. So you want to make sure yours stands out a little bit and that your introduction is clear and interesting. Is your thesis at the end of your introduction? Next, we're going to look at body paragraphs. So you have to be sure you know exactly why each paragraph you have in your paper is there and if it belongs there. 
So, does each paragraph support your thesis? Does each paragraph have a topic sentence? Do you provide information, explanations, quotes, and or proof? Does each paragraph have a concluding sentence that summarizes the paragraph and explains the connection to the thesis? Do you have too many quotes? Are your quotes too long? Do your quotes make sense? So a quote does not stand alone in your paper. You introduce the quote and you explain why it's there and you explain the connection to your point. So you kind of think of a quote kind of like a sandwich. And you have to wonder, is, is your quote too long? Sometimes it's tempting to have long quotes in your paper because it'll help you reach that word count. But if your quotes are too long and you have too many quotes in your paper, you're going to lose marks because your instructor wants to know how these quotes have shaped your thinking and how they fit into your paper. So using too many quotes or using long quotes or using quotes that don't really fit with your point, that will actually work against you. It will not help you. So let's take a look at the conclusion. Does your conclusion restate your thesis? So your topic sentence in your conclusion should restate your thesis. Not word for word, you change the wording, but it has a similar meaning. Does your conclusion summarize your main points? So you're hitting on the highlights. You're hitting on your main points in the conclusion and you're wrapping everything up. Do you have any new ideas in your conclusion? If so, take it out of the conclusion. New ideas do not belong in your concluding paragraph. If this point is important, can you include it in an existing paragraph in your paper? If it is important but does not fit in a paragraph, is there enough information to create a new body paragraph? And if not, then it might be a really cool point that you may not be able to include in your paper. So we've taken a look at the big picture. So let's just review. So make sure you reread the instructions. Make sure you're not missing anything. Make sure your thesis is clear and it makes sense to you and it guides your paper. And take a look at your introduction, your body paragraphs, and your conclusion. Make sure they all support your thesis and they all have reason to be in your paper. Once we've taken a look at the big picture, we're going to take a look at the details. So we have a list here, sentence structure, punctuation, verb tense, word choice, citation format. We're just going to look at an overview in this video. There's not enough time to go through each one, but there are different videos that speak to each one of these points if you're interested. So let me know and I can send you the link. So you want to take a look at your sentence structure. Do you have run-on sentences? So these are sentences that have too much information in one sentence. So when you're reading it, you maybe have maybe, you know, two, three, four different kinds of thoughts in these sentences. So it's good to divide them up. So you can connect those different thoughts using transitional words or phrases. You can use fanboys like for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so. So these words don't typically start your sentence in an academic paper, but they do join two sentences together with the help of a comma. 
You may also use semicolons to join two very related sentences together. But I recommend only joining two sentences with a semicolon. And with the fanboys, maybe two, well, for sure two, maybe three sentences together with those fanboys. You want to make sure you use those periods to divide your thoughts. So it's easier for your instructor to know what you're trying to say. Do you have sentence fragments? So a complete sentence needs a subject and a predicate, a noun and a verb. So sentence fragments are missing one of these two aspects. Like it could be like a clause. Maybe you've written a clause and ended it with a period instead of a comma. And so you end up with a sentence fragment. So you want to make sure that you have a complete sentence. And you want to use a variety of sentence lengths and styles. As I said before, your instructor has a ton of papers to read. And even in your own paper, um, if you have the same style, it can get monotonous. So you want to change it up a bit for interest sake to keep your instructor interested in what they're reading and um, so that you can connect your thoughts very nicely using punctuation and transitions. So if you have any questions on this, there is a video on punctuation that touches on these different aspects. And so speaking of punctuation, let's move on to that. So we have semicolons, colons, dashes, and commas. So there is a video that speaks to these four different topics and explains how to use them properly. So if you're interested in that, you can send me an email and I can send you the link. You also want to make sure that you're using punctuation in accordance to your citation style. So this has to do with bullets, quotations, citations, and headings. So periods and commas and different formatting features, they're all laid out in the citation guide. So make sure you follow them because you don't want to lose marks on um, punctuation or formatting issues. And verb tense. So are you using the correct verb tense? And make sure you use the same verb tense throughout your paper where applicable. So let's speak about academic language. So this again is just an overview. There is a video on academic language and if you're interested, I can send that to you as well. So personal pronouns. So generally in academic papers, you want to avoid personal pronouns, but it depends on your instructor's preference too. Some instructors will say that Personal pronouns are fine in academic papers, while others will say it's best to avoid them. So if in doubt, check with your professor. Contractions are generally avoided in academic writing. Same with intensifiers, like really or very. So if you want to say really important, it's best to choose one more intense word or one stronger word, like critical, or vital, or crucial. Or if you want to say very small, you could say minute, or minuscule, or trace. So I go into um, more detail in the academic language video, but you know, there's always things to learn about the words that we use, and our word choice. We want our word choice to be specific, and we want our word choices to be academic. Transitions. So we all have our favorite transition words that we use. And so when I'm writing an academic paper, I like to keep my transition pages handy so that I can choose from different um, transitional words and I'm not always stuck using the same one. So this helps you avoid repetition and it also helps to keep your paper interesting. Let's look at citation format. 
So how have you formatted your paper? Take a look at your font, at the margins, the headings, the bullets, if you're using charts or tables, and in-text citations. Make sure that you've formatted your title page correctly and that your reference list is correct. So there are lots of ways to make a mistake when you're doing your reference list or your works cited page. So just make sure that you're italicizing what needs to be italicized. Capital words are like the first letters capitalized when it needs to be, but then you're making sure that there's lowercase letters in there too. And all the commas and the periods and the parentheses are all in the right place. So just make sure you have an eagle eye when you're looking over your, um, your page, your paper for formatting. Okay, so let's review the details here. You want to take a look at your sentence structure, your punctuation, your verb tense, your word choice, and your citation format. So make sure when you're self-editing that you allow enough time. And if you're able, you can read your paper out loud. If you have any questions, make sure to send me an email and I'll get back to you. Happy writing!